So seamless tiles are pretty fun for textile design. Um, if you feel that's a little bit overwhelming, just do a basic tile, which could just be throw a rectangle or a square, then just toss your beautiful new design in here. And I'm just going to set this arrange set to back. And as long as your design doesn't go over the edges, you could just take these components and drag it in here. And then you can test this. I'm just going to make a bigger area, obviously, and then see what my repeat looks like. So that's already pretty cool. But we want to do a real seamless tile. So therefore, we start with a basic color, which has no stroke. So set that to none. I'm just going to drag. And then on this, I'm just going to put this beautiful artwork sent to front, make it even a little bit bigger. Okay. And then what we're going to do is cut this design. So we need a box that has no fill and no stroke. And the way that we do this is we need it to be in the same position as the box here. So I'm going to copy, which is control C or command C. Paste in back is control B or command B, which is also on the edit, paste in back. And right away, so let me do this again. Copy, paste in back. So you can see it looks like nothing happened, but something actually happened. So this box in the back is now selected. And when I take the color out, it appears as if it's still there, but that's because there's two boxes. One's on the top right now that's still black, and one in the back that's going to cut has the attributes of no fill and no stroke. So we're going to leave it right there. Now, what we're going to do in the meantime is we're going to switch this fill to a stroke because we need to now align this artwork on the bottom. So let me just show you quickly so this makes sense to everybody. What would happen if I didn't put a partner on the bottom? So if I just drag this, pull this in here, and then in my test area, if I just go ahead, come here and fill this, see how it's chopped off? So that's what the no fill, no stroke box does. So in order for me to get a perfectly aligned partner, I'm going to just shift click on this new artwork and on this box, which I just changed to become a stroke. So once again, just swap right here, the fill to the stroke, click on that, hold down shift, click on the circle and then alt or option drag for Mac. And once you start dragging, you can see that you could easily go off a bit, just add shift, hold down both of those buttons and then let go of your mouse first and then let go of the buttons. And then while it's still selected, wanna make sure that this line is exactly on top of each other. So it shouldn't look thicker. It should look exactly as if it's just one box there. All right, just like this. Then we can delete the second box, take this box that we first had and swap it back. And then we can take all these components, drag it into our swatches, and then test it again. All right, so that's then one complete seam here. Now, we also have to do this if we do it left to right. So I'm going to just take this big flower that we had. I'm going to group this object and group. I'm going to put this here on the side, put, put it on top, and then swap this once more. Shift click on the box, on the components, Alt, drag, add, shift, so it's level. Zoom in, make sure that it's correct. Yes, it's correct. And swap that back. And once again, whatever we put on the inside can be whatever size and rotation that we want. So if you want to drag a couple more of these big ones in here, even if you want to add some more colors, I'm just going to stick with this two tone. And then once again, we're going to drag all of these components inside of my swatches and then test this. There we go. So that's your seamless tile. Okay, so once I have my seamless tile um, that I like, I can obviously come back into my swatches and delete the ones that I didn't like. You can shift click or control click on these and delete command click for Mac. And then I'm going to alt drag my print. So then we're going to change colors. So click on this artwork, go to edit, edit colors, recolor artwork, 
And then you can see here that you have one position for each color. We only work with two colors, but this works with many other like hundreds of colors. Um, quick things, make sure there's no check mark next to black and you get there by clicking on this little field here, color reduction options. So otherwise this would be chopped off and if it's no error here, it means you can't change that color. But we're going to say all, not auto, but all. And then if we can double click on each of these and then say, okay, you can see how the color changes. So that's one way of changing the color. Another thing that's cool is that whatever folder of color swatches you have here will appear here in your color groups. So you could just click on this, for example, brights. And then we have this automatic randomly change color order. So it will only work with colors from in here. And so that's what I did. So just click here and see if you like any of these combinations that come up. Okay, let's say I like this one, or this one, or this one. Say okay. And what's really cool is right away, if you say this one here, we're going to say no, you get a swatch that you can use over and over again that jumps in there. I'm going to do this again. Um, the short way to go to recolor options is once you select an object, you have this little wheel here. I'm going to click on that. It links like a rainbow. And um, instead of using the brights this time, I'm just going to go to edit. And here we can lighten this up a bit. And I'm going to pull up one of these, which is our black. And then we link these and then we can just pull these linked colors along this color wheel. So that's pretty cool. So you can see right now we don't have a new swatch yet, but as soon as we say, okay, maybe like right here, it jumps right in there.